Hello, I am Jim uber -Setzig, and this is my wood and acrylic digital computer. <laughs> this is my second presentation on the subject. Uh, there's a previous presentation which discusses the low-level details, uh, and it's available on a YouTube video, thanks to Patricia, who provided the channel the squiggle video mom. last time. Uh, I'm not going to cover all of those details this time. Uh, the machine is now complete uh, and fully functional. The purpose of it is to provide visualization and grounding in physical reality uh, for students who wish to understand digital logic and how various combinations of logic gates can be used uh, to provide the functions of a digital computer. Instead of having a clock rate of millions of clocks per second, uh, this machine slows things down <clears throat> to about one clock every three seconds, which allows plenty of time for the student to literally see the action of each uh, logic gate and how it contributes to the operation. Fire it up. One thing at a time. Organization of this computer is it has memory elements that look here. Yeah. Better one? Yeah. Thank you. Good job. It has uh, memory elements that look something like this. When it tips to the right, it's a logic one. Okay. So it would then tip the other way. <clears throat> and it tips because a ball comes down from above. The ball represents the clock pulse. When the ball strikes it, it rotates to the other position, like this, representing a logic one. And there's another piece much <coughs> like it below. So this is the least significant bit of a particular number, and it's one. The ball strikes it, it tips to a zero. The ball then comes down to the second one, which tips it and makes that a one. So now you have I got the other one. So now you have like this. It went from 0, 1 to 1, 0, thus counting up. There's a succession of these. As you see here, this is the A register. Here's the first one representing a weight of 1, a weight of 2, a weight of 4, a weight of 8, and so on so that if you have the machine uh, count, which I'll demonstrate shortly, um, the balls keep coming down one at a time. Here's the ball. This is the rising edge mechanism. It causes the ball, which represents a clock pulse, elevates it to the top, which is the rising edge of the clock. <clears throat> As the ball descends, the falling edge of the clock synchronizes all machine operations. So. to demonstrate uh, that much. What's the starting position here? I'll set the starting position to be all uh, binary zeros. And you start by letting the ball roll. And it just simply counts. Yes. Now it's going to be 1-1. One, one. Now it'll be 1-1. One, one. One. Now it'll be 1-0-0. Oh, oh. <laughs> now we go. Nice. Now 1-0-1. Oh, one. <laughs> There's a similar register over here, which is the Q register, built essentially the same way. It simply counts. 
and a third register B of a somewhat different nature uh, to put in a second number. The basic operation of the machine solves this equation. It solves uh, Q, whatever's in the Q register, multiplied by whatever's in the B register, adds whatever's in the A register, and tells you the answer. So it's a multiply and accumulate. Essentially, the operation performed is a mash, to multiply and accumulate. But instead of using electronic logic gates, it uses purely mechanical logic gates. So, <clears throat> if you were to put in a number like, let's say Q was uh, 2 and B was 3. Make it uh, some number like 13. Mm -hmm. And A was sixty-five. Let's see what it does. Four bits, four bits, eight bits. How do you set the sixty-five? Uh, it's eight bits. I'll just set sixty-four. Hmm? Ooh, that's okay. So I'll just set it to um, 64 and uh, one. one. That's 65. And then for B register, we want 13. That's 8. 4 is 12. 8, 4 is 12. And one more. And then the Q register, we'll make it times 2. So what is that? Zero. Zero, zero, one. Zero, zero, one, zero. Okay. Is, is the B register right? Yeah, it's labeled. It's the opposite sense. Okay. <clears throat> but they're all, they're all labeled. So this would be uh, one, one, zero, one. Thirteen. Okay. At the top, there are some logic gates for instruction decode. This way is multiply, divide, or square root. The other position is all other operations that way. And here you have a choice of either square root or times or divide. So that should be set right. And then the criteria for stopping would be overflow or the Q register. So you want it to continue to run otherwise. And I th think that set right. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anyone want to Is predict in stop, binary stop. what the answer should be? <clears throat> 26 plus 65. Does anyone want to predict what that should be in binary so we can see if the machine 
gave the correct answer. Oh, I see. It stopped when the cube became... It was not cube cubed down. It, it, it underflowed, and then it, it stopped. It underflowed, okay. yeah. Excellent. And so, so we're looking for 91. Yeah, I used to have here in a second. And it, where, I don't what, what register is the answer? A. A. The A. Accumulator. Accumulator, of course. It has to be the accumulator. What's 91 in hex? Well, that's 64, 70, plus I don't have 30. What did you say? Yeah, see. Well, 64 plus 32. Did you do this already, Jim? 32. No. Oh. <laughs> so you want 16. No, I need 6. <laughs> well, what have we got? Yeah. Well, what five. we've got is 86, 64, 32, 64, 32, and 5. We've got okay, 0, 1, 0, 1. Write it down. Let's write these down. down. Okay, I'll do it. Ready? Okay. So the result we got is zero, one. Yeah, but you need to say that 64. Well, just in binary. Zero, oh. one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. That's correct. This but it's is not. Five, five, and then B. That's 91. B. Oh, in 27. It's going the other direction, right? So it's 64, oh, 16. 5, 6, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, <laughs> you know what you need? A calculator. A calculator. <laughs> well, we're validating the calculator. What you can do with this machine is, <clears throat> this is the fundamental equation that it solves. But by taking yeah. subsets of that, it can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. <clears throat> For example, if you said Q to be 1, what happened to my good? If you said Q to be 1, then it's 1 times B it's plus adding. A, so it's just B plus A. So that's how you get it to add. Mm. If you set this thing... But B is only four bits. If you set this little thing here to where it mark negate, it will change the sign of the number in A. So if you put in 5, it'll convert it to minus 5. It uses 2's complement notation for that. So if you first negate 5, if you first negate the value in A and then do this with Q equal to 1, you get B minus A. Mm. So it can subtract. If you set A to 0 at the beginning, then adding A does nothing of it, and you get a multiplication. You get whatever's in Q times B. So it can multiply. Subtracting is done by multiple subtractions. Division. Said, division. Division. division, I'm saying, it, yeah, sorry. Division is accomplished with multiple subtractions. Okay, so you set Q to zero and let it count up. And it counts how many times it can subtract B from the negative of A. So Q just goes one, two, three, and the machine stops when it can no longer subtract B from A. That's how it subtracts. Yes. So divide, divides, divides, divides. divides. I'm sorry, that's how it divides. So it gives you an integer divide. It gives it an integer divide. Uh, Does it have remainder? <laughs> I haven't tried the remainder part, but it, I'm sure it would leave the remainder in one of the registers yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Now, the square root is the most interesting one of all these. Because I looked it up and a, there was a Pythagorean society sometime in ancient Greek history. And they, they were some of the first people to think about, or at least publish, some ideas. 
they represented numbers as little circles. <coughs> so uh, they thought of a square, a number that's a square. It means like three times three is nine. So three is the s nine is therefore the square of three. So here's a square number: one, two, three, four, two rows and two columns. If you want the next number that's a square. You add five. One, two, three, four, five. And that gives you three times three, which is nine. If you want the next number that's a square, you add seven more. And if you want the next number that's a square, you add more to get five times five, five rows and five mm -hmm. columns, you add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it goes up by two. And, then, and it continues that way. It's a series. Plus it's another, always, plus it's always 13, and so on. So I built the machine to provide a modified division. <clears throat> the number that it subtracts each time repetitively to get the answer to the division is in register B. I built register B so that it can generate this sequence of numbers. One time, one, three, five, seven, nine, mm -hmm. eleven, thirteen. And it subtracts them one at a time. So whatever your number is, supposing you wanted the square root of some number like 16, first it subtracts one, 15, Next, it subtracts 3, 12. Then it subtracts 5, 7. Then it subtracts 7, it gets 0, and stops. How many times did it subtract? 1, 2, 3, 4, which is the square root of 16. Mm -hmm. That's how this machine calculates. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. I told you, I tell you the algorithm. This is the algorithm the machine uses. <laughs> and the way I got a B register to, to, to provide the sequence of numbers, one, three, five, seven, I added this layer on the back side of the machine, which I will now show you. Okay. Reverse side. Can I have okay. a little help here to okay. tip this thing so it doesn't fall? I want to turn it around so this side mm. shows to the camera. <laughs> Uh, I got it, I got it. Because I need to talk about it from the other side here. <clears throat> the B register is right in here. I will turn some of the elements of the B register from this side. Do you see anything changing on that side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see what's there? It's a flip-flop. And as the ball rolls down, it flips these in a manner that makes the thing count. But this element here above that is the least significant bit. I set that permanently to a one. And the next three oh, bits just yes. simply count. It counts. So it generates one, three, five, seven, and so on. It adds two each time. Oh, I see. Because the so wait, to, you're right. It's always an odd number. So it's always an odd number. The, the zero so bit the is one. So the least significant bit can just be a one. Oh, also. nice. Two. Ah. A big CNC machine and a laser cutter and a lot of other nice expensive tools. They also have three pinball machines. <laughs> um, and I was looking at the pinball machines and I thought of this idea. Could I build a nice educational digital computer that operates on a similar principle to the rolling ball on a pinball machine? That's how I got the idea. <clears throat> Pretty awesome. Thank you, Jim. Well.